district courts, two district courts, Patiala House and Tis Hazari. Today we are proud to say that we have district courts in Karkaduma, in Saket, in Rohini, and in Dwarka. And I'm sure with the number of litigants coming from our neighboring state also, if more courts are required to be made, we shall be only too willing to do that. In the Delhi High Court, like in all the other courts, we have provided parking space for our lawyers. The Delhi High Court, of course, has a most modern, automatic, multi-level car parking system. And that system was made possible because the Delhi government contributed over rupees 200 crores to build that. It's the pride of Delhi because there's no better parking system than the one which belongs to the Delhi High Court. I believe there are dispensaries in every high court, district court, which is available. However, if you feel that there is something that needs improvement, kindly do not hesitate to let us know, and we shall do whatever is possible. We also would like to help equip the libraries that exist today so that young lawyers, which has been mentioned, can have access to law, law, laws and laws and laws, so that they can have access easily without having to purchase their books. We are very much in favor of an appropriate medical insurance scheme for lawyers. However, we need your guidance. What is the kind of insurance scheme that you would like to have? because we would, we would be only too willing to apply that insurance scheme to all the lawyers of Delhi, especially those who are not as well off as many others are. Apart from that, much has been spoken about women lawyers. We welcome that. As a woman, I welcome it even more. Please do let us know what it is that we as a government can do in support of women lawyers so that they can stand side by side and follow their profession as easily as they, their brothers do in the courts. With these words, thank you very much for inviting me, and I wish you all the very best and assure you that whatever is possible by the Delhi government, we shall be only too happy to give that help or assistance provided we have your guidance, because we would like to make the high courts of Delhi and the lawyers of Delhi the best served by a government anywhere in our country. Thank you. Let me at the very outset compliment Sri Goswami and his team for this extraordinary gathering of lawyers, one of the largest that I have seen in recent days in Delhi. And I think the extraordinary and the grand welcome that you have accorded to our Rashtrapatiji has been more than returned by his gracious presence here. And his presence here is the final testimony to the fact that all of us in the country devote the highest importance to the welfare of the legal fraternity. It is indeed a privilege for me to participate in the opening session of the National Seminar on Welfare of Lawyers organized by the Bar Council of Delhi. With over 60,000 registered member advocates, it is the largest Bar Council in the country. The history of the Bar Council of Delhi coincides with that of the Advocates Act of 1961, and in its over 50 years of service to the legal fraternity of Delhi, it has traveled from its modest space in Old Delhi High Court to its own premise, equipped today with the state-of-the-art technologies. I am particularly happy that this event is dedicated to the welfare of lawyers. Welfare of legal fraternity of India is of premier importance, especially when we have nearly 2 million registered practitioners of law, which makes our legal fraternity as one of the largest 
legal fraternities in the world. I am reminded of what late Dean Pitt, the most well-known trade unionist of his time, said. He used to say that the strongest trade union in the world is the trade union of lawyers, the brethren in the black robes. As the representative body of lawyers, the Bar Council of Delhi has had a splendid record of contribution in espousing the values of the Constitution, preserving the rule of law, and strengthening of our legal and justice system. The legal fraternity can be justly proud of the enormous contributions made by its members during our freedom movement. The stalwarts of the movement, Mahatma Gandhi, Dada Bhai Nauruji, Surendranath Banerjee, C. Rajagopalachari, Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Saifuddin Kichlu, Motilal Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru, Sadar Vallabh Bhai Patel were all distinguished legal luminaries. Likewise, in recent year times, Sir Din Shamullah, C. K. Daftari, Motilal Sitalwar, H. M. Sirwai, Nani Palkhiwala, Kanhayalal Mishra, and others have done their legal fr their fraternity and the nation proud. I am more than aware that since the introduction of the Welfare Front about 12 years ago, it has not fully achieved its objective as in as much as the corpus of the fund is not considered adequate enough to provide for the requisite support. Members of the Daily Bar Council led by Shri Goswami and Murariji had met me and have given certain suggestions towards securing the welfare of lawyers, including certain amendments which they have suggested are required to be made to the Advocates' Welfare Fund. I would like to assure you that these suggestions are already receiving our attention and very soon we will be able to move forward in this direction. Some of the possibilities that we are considering and which we have in mind include Amendment to Section 19 of the Advocates' Welfare Act to provide for ex gratia payment in case of hospitalization, major surgical operations, or treatment for serious illnesses of lawyers, spouses, and dependent children. <laughs> Section 26 of the Act provides for contribution to fund through sale and affixation of stamps before various courts. The state government is to prescribe the value of such stamps. I am informed that presently, the value is limited to only rupees 25 in Delhi. This value of stamps could be increased to rupees 100, which will provide an additional source of funding for the fund and would increase the corpus by almost four times, enabling the fund to come to the rescue of lawyers who need it. There is also a suggestion that Section 3D of the Act, which is an enabling provision for central and state governments to contribute to the fund, be made mandatory. We realize that the requirement of funds for welfare of lawyers is large, and monies provided through other means may not be able to fully meet up this demand. Therefore, contributions from governments would certainly enhance the utility of the fund. Government will consider this demand sympathetically in consultation with the Ministry of Finance and Planning Commission. May I close by assuring members of the profession that the UPA government will continue to strive for the welfare of the legal fraternity, in particular of the younger members and lady members, and will proactively work to implement all the constructive suggestions that have been received so far. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, of my personal commitment and support to all endeavors required for the welfare of the lawyers. Thank you very much. I'm glad to have this opportunity to be present at the inauguration of the All India Seminar on Welfare Activities for Members of the Legal Fraternity and compliment the Bar Council of Delhi for taking the initiative in holding the discussions on this issue. I am a student of law and have graduated in the subject Lawyers and, the li and Their Lives always create immense interest in me. Though I have not had the good fortune for practicing at the bar, 
I am aware of the travels of lawyers, especially the juniors and women lawyers. In the public mind, normally, the image of a lawyer denotes the most successful members of the bar who command wide respect, whose views are valued and listened to, who earn huge fees, write columns in the newspapers, and more than often appear on television debates. The reality, however, is that such lawyers constitute an extremely small fraction of the entire community. The large majority struggle to survive and uphold the law amidst very difficult circumstances. With little public attention, poor infrastructure, meager earnings, and stiff competition. Women lawyers and those with other disadvantages find the going even more tough. I am particularly happy about the focus on women in the seminar because there is a wide recognition of the need to ensure the safety and security of women in our society at large. Women lawyers can play an important leadership role in this regard. But it is absolutely essential that an appropriate and conducive environment be ensured for them in the first instance. I gather that a group of lady lawyers in the Supreme Court have moved a petition to seek the enforcement of the court's own verdict in Bisakha case on providing a more congenial <coughs> workplace environment within the courts for lady lawyers. I am sure Supreme Court will give expeditious attention to the matter. The recent incidents of brutal assault and child rape in Delhi have shaken our society collective consciousness. They highlight the urgency with which we need to introspect at the erosion of values and our repeated failure to ensure safety and security of our women and children. We must ensure that dignity and respect for women at all times. The legal fraternity, especially women lawyers, must be in the vanguard of enhancing, of enabling our national, our nation, reset its moral compass. Lawyers and the Bar Council of Delhi must do everything possible within their command to disseminate the values of human dignity and equality as well as ensuring that the rights of women are protected at all times. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the judiciary is one of the most important pillars of our vibrant democracy. Lawyers play an extremely important role in enabling the public access, justice, and ensuring that our Constitution becomes a living reality. The legal profession is regarded a noble profession in every society where the rule of law prevails. In India, a large number of our national leaders, including Mahatma Gandhi, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, and many others were lawyers. In fact, it can be argued that training as lawyers and exposure to legal systems in India and abroad 
for our leaders played a major role in the evolution of our unique national movement which sought to wrest from the British freedom, basic rights, democracy using reason, argument, peace, non-violence and moral courage. I congratulate the Bar Council of Delhi for having taken the lead in organizing a seminar of this nature which is of significance to lawyers across the country. I wish the seminar and its participants every success. I hope these deliberations will lead to concrete action by the Bar Council of Delhi as well as all concerned authorities. Let me conclude with a quote from two legal scholars, Mr. Renard Strickland and Mr. Frank T. Red. According to them, I quote, at the most pragmatic level, lawyers are society's professional problem solvers. Lawyers are called upon to make uh, distinctions to explain how and why cases or experiences are alike or different. Lawyers are expected to restore equilibrium to be balanced. Every discipline, every profession, every job and every calling has a cutting edge. At the cutting edge, lines are drawn. Lawyers and judges are society's ultimate line drawers. On one side of the line, the conduct, action, or inaction is proper. On the other side of the line, it is not." Unquote. Let me also repeat to my young lawyer friends the words of Abraham Lincoln, the former President of the United States and himself an eminent lawyer. I quote, let no young man choosing the law for a calling for a moment yield to the popular belief Resolve to be honest at all events, and if in your own judgment you cannot be an honest lawyer, resolve to be honest without being a lawyer." Unquote. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I congratulate the Bar Council of Delhi for organizing this seminar, and all of us are looking forward to the deliberations of this seminar. Thank you. Jai Hind.